Hey everybody, thanks for being here. This week we're down near the mouth of the Columbia River or the buoy tin fishery fishing spin fish and spinners for fall salmon. Now if you want to learn how to catch more fish, stay tuned. I'm Justin Wolf and this is Angler West Television. Well, it's the last day of the season here at um, Buoy 10 for the salmon fishery, and we're going to head out here with the guys from Yakima Bait and have a good day, hopefully. And the tides are perfect, and conditions are flat calm, so it should be should be a great time. So yesterday we were out here fishing, and we we caught uh, had six fish on, landed three of them, released a couple of tulies. So all in all, it was a great day. Lots of action. Your numbers are incorrect. Yeah. <laughs> now the truth is, we landed six, one was a jack, and uh, but we only kept three because we had a couple tulies. That's the truth. That Steve had it wrong, way wrong. I can honestly say that's the first time he's undershot the numbers. <laughs> well, we got a little mix of uh, three and a half spinners and spin fish. And that's kind of what we found was our ticket yesterday. So we're going back to you know what we learned yesterday and uh, gonna fish some pro trolls with um, a couple different colors of our three inch spin fish and of course our Hildebrand spinners. Okay, so here's what I caught them, ca caught them on yesterday. I had a fish flash and I had a uh, our new spin fish pull apart lure. You fill it with bait, it's on your line, both halves and you just fill it, we'll fill it. We're gonna, we used tuna yesterday, canned tuna, and just push it together, and it spins on your line, and got the big scent stream coming out of it. It's awesome. We get some lead out there. We're gonna go 20 ounces on the bow, and the rest is gonna be 16s. Except that for bow mine. rod's gonna get crushed. Except for mine. Except for buzz. I'm going four ounces, big sinker, and I'm on a long line out the back, the trailing lure. A lot of the fish, you know, you get into the fish, and if you hit them right on, you know, you'll catch them, you know. But uh, but if you go through the fish, and they're kind of excited, and they're like, whoa, and they don't see anything, and here comes that trailing lure, proven strategy to trail one lure out the back. That's me today. Got some tuna here. This has got um, garlic bait sauce, and it has some uh, garlic bloody tuna, and some uh, sodium sulfite and a little bit of monster bite. It's a great blend. And my recipe is just tuna out of the can, some rock salt, and some Procure Krill powder. I just kind of want to keep it simple. So we'll start one kind of hefty, one kind of light, and kind of see where we meet in the middle and what the fish want. So pretty simple process here. As you can see, I just stuff the bow, or the, the front of the lure, until I have a little bit protruding out the water hole there. And then I put it in the back, you know, and I don't stuff it super, super tight. Just tight enough that I can push two pieces back together. And I like to be able to watch it kind of ooze out the bottom as I do. So see that there, how your juices are coming? That means you got enough of your bait in there and it's pushing the scent out, which is what you want. I kind of clean it off and then you can see I'm, I'm ready to go. So the water's gonna push through there and it's gonna filter that scent out through these scent ports in the back. And I have this one rigged in my top left side to, rig, uh, to run clockwise. So um, if I don't get bit after a while, I may switch and just run it out the other hole and see if that's what the fish want. So we're gonna drop this thing down, deploy the monkey pickle spin fish and see what we can get. So this color here, here, here is called uh, Mother of Pearl Black, M-O-P-B. And um, this is a four inch version and Buzz is gonna fish this just on a standard like herring leader four to five feet behind a fish flash. Um, we're fishing ours with Pro Troll Flasher um, and about a 36 inch leader to our, our spin fish. And so the Pro Troll imparts action on it. Um, so we want a shorter leader um, than we have on, a spin, on the fish flash because the fish flash is rotating and it's drawing the fish in. So we've got kind of two different presentations. Buzz is long lining, I'm heavy leading. So we're gonna have a little head to head contest. We're gonna see if the great one can get one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? Four, four rods against one. Well, no, we're just just you and I. <laughs> oh, okay. Just you and I. Okay. Because we're spin fish against spin fish. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, just stuff it, you know, a little bit on each side. And when I squeeze them together, I want to see juice coming out. See that dripping right there? It lets me know it's full enough and it's not over full. See, I still got some air back there. So, you know, I got places for that water to flow through and disperse that scent out the back. And that's been the best method. Yeah, and although the, although the spin fish comes rigged from the factory with two, two single hooks extending back, I'm using, I'm using a, uh, a siwash hook on a swivel with two or three beads. So it's got a bearing surface there. And this has been, especially with this barbless hook rule, 
The single siwash has a real long point, so you're less, le fish are less likely to throw the barbless hook. We're starting here at the Megler Bridge on the Washington side, and uh, there's an area here, there's a trailer park and a uh, there's a hole they call the Red Roof, which is, there's a big barn over there with a red roof on it. And we're just gonna start here and troll our way down towards the church. We're more or less kind of holding into the tide right now, but we're slowly creeping forward. So we're gonna start out doing that and then uh, just see how the morning materializes. Welcome back to the Columbia River. I'm Justin Wolf. We're just a few miles from the saltwater intercepting Fall Run Chinook and Coho with spinfish and spinners. I just put a little on the shaft and on the outside of the spinner blade. Put the gel on the inside, a lot of times it can bug up and just get oh, yeah. hung up in there and not spin around. So. Ready to go. Ticket. We kind of got it spread out just to where we, we're kind of covering the whole water column with lots of different options. In the bow rod, we have a uh, spin fish. And then the back corner, we got a spin fish. And then Jared's got a spin fish. And then we got the rest of them, we got spinners. So the, the Hildebrand spinners can be very effective and so can the spin fish. So I think we're, we're productively fishing on every rod. So. so I've got my, of course, I'm rigging up a fish flash. I got a free sliding spreader on there. And then I've got a swivel and a snap. And of course, the the fish flash has double-ended ball bearing swivels. A lot of people don't realize that. There's a there's a ball bearing on each end, so each end of the ball bearing swivel twist, keep the twist out. And uh, and then, you know, when we first started fishing with us with fish flash down here, you know, your your dropper a lot of times was monofilament, and then it could swing up and tangle with your fish flash. So we'd always rig, you know, a spreader or some kind of outfit up here and we'd have a distance between here and our fish flash so that our weight couldn't tangle with our fish flash. But if you use a free sliding spreader, and of course, the, the especially in combination with a rigging wire, <clears throat> there's just no way, I mean, you just don't get tangled. So you can rig your free sliding spreader right above your fish flash. And the rigging wire, the idea of the rigging wire is to have a rigid piece and a piece that won't tangle up is should you, you know, troll into some weeds or grass or whatever, or with another angler. And then I've got a, a rigging wire behind my fish fly. So if you get into a clump of weeds, if you've got monofilament, it'll just wrap into a big ball. But with these rigging wires, it doesn't. I mean, you just grab the rigging wires, pull them apart, that stuff sheds off. And then I've got a pretty short leader. I've only got three foot. Now, my combined leader is about four foot or a little more, but the first portion of my leader is my rigging wire, and then I've got a snap on the end and a swivel. So if we do get tangled, I've got a pretty short leader to have to untangle. So fewer tangles, and if you do get tangled up uh, with another angler or some, a lot less, a lot less to untangle when you're using these rigging wires. Just a great way to go and uh, it's pretty much how I rig every rod when I'm when I'm running a fish flash. Who wants my line? We like it. Long armed it. <laughs> That's where that seven foot reach comes in handy for the first fish of the morning. Yeah. Bam. 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 All right, Jared. Nice. I didn't catch it. I just hit it. <laughs> Calm down there, fishy. Is it? I'm gonna have to get this out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're oh, bonking yeah. it. So here's the deal. This year, 2020, uh, the limit is one salmon at buoy 10. Either Chinook, which can be fin clipped or not, because there's a lot of wild Chinook in the Columbia going back up to the Hanford Reach, um, or so any Chinook or a fin clip coho, one or the other, only one salmon this year at Buoy 10. And that's because the run is a little off this year, and so they've restricted the, the harvest. Normally it's two, only one can be a Chinook. This year, just one. That one came on the spinner, so apparently those are working this morning. <laughs> Good job, Dan. Yeah, that fish uh, was not coming off. No. Usually with the spinners, they, they you know, you, you lose more than you land. So um, that fish wasn't coming off the way it had it kind of just pinned in its mouth. Um, you know, the hooks were sunk perfect. So that's uh, one of our copper, uh, CRCG is the spinner code for that, which is copper red uh, chartreuse green. So it's a copper blade and a three and a half and uh, a spinner without the hoochie. 
and they seem to like those down here so i think we're going to put some more uh steve special scent on it and give it back to dan and see if it can't go again you there yep you want to keep the rest of them out or let them drag it up cool bow rod spin fish 20 ounces of lead i just feel weights oh he's there he's there Oh, a little, what is that, a little jacker? Nice, little jack. Little jack. Gonna put the jack back. Spinfish yeah. got one. Woohoo! We're near the mouth of the Columbia River with the crew from Yakima Bay, along with Jason Hambly and Steve Lynch. And the fish are telling us that we're doing things right. Watching the graph here, it seems like we're seeing fish consistently between 20 and 30 feet, but a lot of them around 22 to 25 feet. The water right now is about 67 degrees, and it's uh, continuing to come in. And uh, it's, a, it's a few degrees cooler, but as the tide switches and starts to run out, it's probably going to get up around 70 degrees. So that's kind of why with these warmer water conditions, we're running more uh, artificial lures, such as um, spin fish and spinners. So that kind of gives us a... Uh, that covers our basis for the for the conditions we have so the big deal here at buoy 10 is well, okay what do you use well there's no doubt that the most popular thing is herring and anchovies bait in combination with a fish flash or maybe even a rotating flasher but if you talk to a lot of the guides and the fishermen that have frequented this fishery for years the consensus seems to be that bait in the lower estuary has the advantage when you get up near the bridge, along the sands, up near the bridge, and above the bridge, particularly when the water temperatures are warm, which is usually happening during the season, you know, the surface temp can be 70, 72 at times. Um, then there's days and times when spinners, uh, or maybe one of the new spin fish, would be, uh, would be the ticket. I've had times here when I had, every person in my rod had a herring on with a fish flash, and I'd put a spinner on my rod out the back, and I remember one trip. <laughs> I mean, I every every guy in the boat I handed my rod off to, and because we caught all our fish on spinners, and that wasn't the only time. So there are times when spinners, like a mulky five and a half or six and a half, um, uh, can really be good, really produce. And the consensus is the warmer water, the fish respond to that better. I'm kind of amazed how the popularity of these little three and a half. Uh, uh, maybe size four uh, Hildebrandt spinners or other other small spinners produce uh, when fished in combination with either fish flash or rotating flasher. Um, the Dan, the fish Dan got this morning came on that, and we had several strikes. Jason had, I don't know, three. He had three on it yesterday. Yeah. So, hey, make sure and mix it up a little bit and see what happens. <laughs> well, what I've got here is kind of my fishing leaderboard of death so to speak and um, these are kind of my spin fish collection and, and these are some of the ones that I use a lot you know and this is our three inch version over here as you can see and these over here are our newest versions of the family this is a two and a half inch and a two inch spin fish which still has the same properties as the larger size spin fish still has the porthole for the water and the scent holes coming out the back it's still an easy pull apart bait fill chamber same exact thing runs the exact same so you know fortunate part of my job is I get to test these lures and uh, fish them and have fun with them and play with them before they go to market. And so you'll be looking to see these additional sizes, which are gonna be great for not only your kokanee and trout type market, but um, also the bigger salmon. I've caught a lot of big Chinook on them this, this summer and sockeyes and got guys that are eerie, um, in, um, are excited to try them for walleyes. Uh, you know, stuff them full of crawlers and hang a right crawler there. off the tail. Right. So, and we just hooked the fish, so that was a great tip tip. Spin fish, baby. Yeah, that's a better fish. This fish, uh, spin fish, we just loaded up with the, the tuna sauce. Man, he liked the spin fish, Steve. He did. He's pulling on it. You gotta love it when yeah, the fish pull on it. Them. When they pull back, those are the fun fish to catch. Yeah, I like it when they pull back. Rip line. Steve always says, thank you, Lord, may I have another? And boom, Steve got another, right in the sunshine. Man. Here it comes. A 
the double trouble spin fish has been a killer for me. Um, you know, all the way from Eastern Washington, all the way up to uh, Wanapum, Wells Dam, all the way up to Brewster. And uh, you know, you come here doing the same thing, same leader length, same bait, um, and boom, fish on. So it's a pretty consistent pattern all the way up. Nice work, buddy. Thank you. Boom. Thank you, Lord, man. Please have a time. So, you know, I was just looking at Steve, and uh, generally when we go out fishing, you make two or three different batches of tuna, or, you know, if you're salmon fishing, eggs, whatever it is, um, you know, shrimp. So it's always good to have different versions of bait to be able to kind of test and see what the fish want. As Buzz always says, the fish will tell you what they want. Well, you know, so far the fish are telling us that Steve's mix, which is more heavily garlic, uh, I think Jason said some sodium sulfite, some monster bite, um, you know, those types of things are in there. And I didn't mind just more tuna, krill powder, and um, salt, just kind of more of a, you know, basic blend. And so you pay attention to what the fish are telling you. And right now the fish are telling me they want Steve's blend. So I'm gonna give mine about another 20 minutes soak. If I don't get bit, I'm gonna switch to his tuna because that's kind of what the fish are wanting, at least right now. So always be ready to switch, you know, and keep your mind open when you're fishing to be able to change. You know, that change is where you're gonna be more successful. And sometimes you stumble onto success where you wouldn't think you would. Man, I was just about a half a second away from bringing my rod up because we got our last few fish to spin and Jason was like, we've been getting our fish suspended. And I looked over my rod berries. That's a good sign. There's a spin fish, the three inch chartreuse monkey pickle is what we call it. Welcome back to the Columbia River. I'm Justin Wolf. Today in the warm water, we're using both spin fish and spinners and they're both working. Nice, got a coho on the spin fish. Is it a hatchery or a wild one? It's a wild one. It's a wild one, it's gotta go back. That's okay, at least we got one. Yeah, yeah he's still yeah. there. It's crazy, he's just swimming with it. I think it might be a jack. Yeah. Cool. You wanna leave the rest of them out or Yeah. Just take oh, I just got whacked. I was reeling in, I stopped, but he's got drilled. Yeah. Right. This one's on a spinner. It's one of our three and a half Hildebrand spinners. That one's in a uh, pearl red dot finish um, with no hoochie skirt on it and uh, you know behind a pearl troll. Leader length's around 30 inches. So uh, I think Jay, how, how deep are you? About 14 poles? 15 uh, poles? 25. 25 poles, which is about feet. 50 feet on a line counter. So um, that seems to be getting it done. Jason's got us on the fish. It's got a brass back with a white front on the finish, like a pearl white with a red dot. Red and white is always a great combination down here. For some reason, Astoria, that that those colors are just seem to be pretty effective on spinners. I was taking a photo and I looked back, my rod was buried. So, uh, you know, spin fish. We're, uh, <laughs> I just happened to look back here. Like I said, my rod was buried, and uh, you know, 25 feet deep on the, or 25 poles on the line counter or on the on the reel because it's about 50 feet. That spin fish. That's two fish that have come right there. So, obviously, that's kind of a pattern we've established. That's working good. Today we got what two on spin fish we've killed and two on spinners. Yep. yep. Perfect. Beautiful fish. Look at the colors on that thing. Awesome. So the spin fish, um, the hook configuration can be kind of really whatever you want it to be. We come rig them factory with our 4.0 is going to come with a, a four out hook, and right now our 3.0 comes with two out hooks. And you can change them really to rig them depending on how fast you're fishing. If you're fishing slower water. The two aughts or lighter hooks on the 3.0 um, may may work better for you if you're going slow. But at this speeds, you know, we're, we're running, you know, with the current and anywhere from, you know, sometimes three to three and a half, four miles an hour, you can run bigger hooks. And so I've been tying double three aught hooks on the spin fish for here because, um, you know, it's a barbless fishery. So, you know, those bigger hooks have a little bit better bite and um, and they seem to work good in the speeds. And so, you know, you can kind of feel free to change them up a little bit. Just what I suggest is put one in the package, it comes out of package in the water and see how it spins in the water. And then if you add hooks that get bigger, if it doesn't spin like it did when you first put it in the water, then you should probably change back to a lighter hook. But you can change the hooks if your fishery requires it too. 
fish are really attracted to these flashers. The idea is to get them to get them to come into the boat. In fact, a lot of people down here, a lot of guides and such, you know, the guides will take instead of you know, some of the guides instead of taking four clients, they'll take six. And it's pretty common knowledge that if you've got six flashers, you know, guys fishing in your boat, six flashers down there, maybe a couple rigged up double you'll draw more fish into your boat. And not, so not only will you catch more fish because you got more rods, but you'll catch more fish per angler because you're drawing those fish into the boat. And uh, that, that turns them on, they get excited, they bite. And uh, if, they don't, if, if they get excited and they don't happen to bite and they kind of miss the gear and you keep trolling, that's, that's what my trailing lure is all about. <laughs> we were west of the uh, Megler Bridge and the tide's starting to flood. It's, we're getting to the tail end of the incoming. So a lot of times this little uh, channel up here, the 30 foot channel up here above the bridge can be pretty good on the tail end of the incoming tide. And then as it starts to slack out, it'll fizzle out for a little bit sometimes. And then we'll usually go up, up by the shipwrecks and just start there and kind of work out with the tide and then troll it down to the bridge and then go back up to the top and start again and just keep doing that pattern there on, the, uh, out, on these smaller outgoing tides and that can be pretty effective. It's little. That's a steelhead. That's a steel. I was gonna say it's a steelhead. You can't keep it. Yeah. Isn't that a steelhead? And unfortunately, yeah, yeah, it looks like a steelhead to me. It looks like a steelhead. Uh, yeah. You can always tell because steelhead, the inside of their mouth is all white. I mean, and uh, and a chinook is all black on the bottom jaw, and a coho is kind of black and white. Ouch. Oh yeah, how you bit, bit you back? Bit me. <laughs> how you bit you back? <laughs> you bit the great one. <laughs> anyway, silver. Hatchery silver, we can keep those. They gotta have a big clip. Otherwise, you gotta let them go. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. You know, without the support of the sponsors, there would be no show. So please thank them when you can. Now, get out there and do some great fishing.